The management of a branch of the Canadian Handicrafts Guild left no time expressing their willingness to assist in the war work brought on by the outbreak of World War II. Less than a month after the Canadian government declared war on Germany, the branch approved a motion stating that they would cooperate in any way to help the present national situation. They did this in various ways, such as sewing and knitting items for the Red Cross. This brochure was dispersed by the Canadian Red Cross in the 1940s. It included knitting instructions for a variety of necessities needed by the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. Wool was sparse at this time, and the brochure instructs knitters to use only the wool called for because wool is too precious to waste. Members from the branch met once a week to knit items such as the ones listed here. Members worked at home as well, and in 1940 alone, the branch made over a thousand articles for the war effort. The Red Cross also advertised their need for knitted items through various means, such as in this art and knitting booklet. There were patterns for knitted socks, wristlets, sleeveless sweaters, and helmets. Measuring devices such as these were supplied to knitters during the First and Second World Wars. They were used to help knitters knit properly sized socks. Socks weren't faster than other clothing items, therefore they were in high demand. Despite the difficult times and extra war work, the branch did their best to keep up with their regular agenda. They continued to exhibit works, put on classes, bring in speakers, and sell works in the branch shop. Considering the conditions, they were extremely successful. This is a small oval rug made by Dorothy Rankin. Members of the branch had to get creative during the war due to materials being scarce. This rug was made from strips of rayon that were dyed and braided. At the height of World War II, the Canadian government commandeered wool because it took 11 sheep to clothe one man in uniform. A selection of members suggested using buffalo wool instead. They contacted the City Parks Board and asked if they could use the wool from the buffaloes at Assiniboine Park. Buffalo hair would collect on the fences when the buffalo scratched their backs, and the park allowed branch members to collect the fleece from there. A selection of women, Kitty Churchill, Agnes McTaggart, and Flora McIver, tested the buffalo hair to see if it was an adequate replacement. They did mix some with sheep's wool and experimented with cleaning, spinning, and dyeing the buffalo hair. The scarf, mittens, and mat you see here were created with the tested wool. Despite their efforts, buffalo hair was not a good replacement for sheep's wool, mainly because it was too difficult to collect and was resistant to dyes. <laughs>